heard it here, folks. Haley stays pooping on the plus size section. <laughs>today.
they're scared to be fat but scared to be fat but it's yeah. deeper than i feel that. like yeah and i feel like that kind of falls under my gripe with like people saying that about homophobia like people are not actually afraid of gay people at least you know maybe some are but mm-hmm. they're not like ah like you would with spiders <laughs> or clowns or holes right. like whatever your phobias are it's not the same right right and i hate it's when not people like split hairs like that right it's not like oh my gosh there's fat people let me run away it's more like i'm gonna treat you like yeah. shit because you're fat <laughs> like uh-huh. because i hate you yeah fat phobia can range from microaggressions like you have such a pretty face or that dress actually gives you a waist to blatant bigotry like when everyone's favorite white man bill maher publicly called for a return of fat shaming to combat obesity um he equated overeating to racism and littering as a behavior that should be admonished in public ways. I don't know where he gets off saying that kind of thing when he has a face like he does, but you know, white men are going to white men. Am I right? White men are going to white men. Not that I should be shaming anyone's looks, but I'll make an exception for him because he is (laughs) very frequently loud and wrong. And this is no exception. Absolutely. Fat phobia can also be disguised as a concern. Like, I'm worried about your health. Go fuck yourself. Mm Mm-hmm. I can say that that is the most common fat phobia that I have personally experienced. But I know that that is later. That is a section that we will be doing later in this episode. Mm -hmm about Mm. our own unfortunately most people don't care about fat phobia because society sees all excess fat or in some cases not even excess fat just fat period as unhealthy and if you're unhealthy that's also inherently wrong ableism is deeply ingrained in our society in a number Mm -hmm. of ways Like most other things in American society, fat phobia also has racist origins that stem from the colonizers' opinions of Black people and their bodies. Um, I do think that it is important to note that there are a lot of different sectors in society, social media, the world, etc. Sectors like fitness and wellness, the natural slash crunchy living, um, all that deal, spirituality, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. new age, mm-hmm. any any niche that has like the underlying themes of this way of life is the pure way, it is the superior way, anything that is focusing on purification like clean eating, detoxing your body, Mm -hmm. being all natural or being anti-chemicals, toxic positivity, even to go as far as things like Ascension or the 5D life, all of those are intrinsically connected to white supremacy, anti-Semitism, and the alt-right agenda. Mm -hmm. And... When you're exploring those spaces, it's very important to be careful and stay aware of what you're consuming and the type of people that you're surrounding yourself with, because that ideology is so insidious and is so good at reeling you in before you know what is Okay, Uh, but... I agree with you. I I know when I went through my awakening and obviously you don't go through one, you go through like a gazillion. It's a constant thing. Uh, Mm -hmm. I can't tell you how many times, even when I worked at the metaphysical store, like how quickly and easily it is to join like a cult that you're, you think is like all like 
love and light and good vibes and 5D. And then, like, all of a sudden, you're like, oh, we're Mm -hmm. not these aren't good people. You know what I mean? Like these, right. Like if you, you know what I mean? Like, mm, Mm -hmm. it's kind of a red flag to me. If I walk into a group of, you know, um, what's it called? A anyways, continue. I don't know what I was trying to say. Anyways. No, I mean, that's an excellent point. Like even conspiracy theories, like Mm -hmm. thinking that I'm trying to think of one, like, there are lizards and the lizard people who walk among mm-hmm. us. That's mm-hmm. extremely anti-Semitic, and you know, not something you should espouse as a belief or something that's correct. And right. even in, again, if you're into conspiracy theories, be very careful, right? Because there's some that are fun, and then right. there's others that can literally get people killed. If oh yeah, we. Want. I don't want to get super off topic with yeah. that. It's just something that I thought was really important to mention because fat phobia and the wellness community, obviously, very, very linked. And mm-hmm. once you kind of pull the curtain back on the wellness community, there's others that I know that are on our feeds, on our listeners' feeds, people that we know, people that we love can be into that stuff it's just very important to kind of put that out as a disclaimer and as a warning because they are in the business of converting you to that belief system by any means necessary Mm -hmm. but scary scary very scary (laughs) and up next (laughs) (laughs) no like one thing i did want to it's still it's not related to fat phobia but like i know you and I were talking last week kind of about witchy shit and mm-hmm. how I was like, oh, like, you know, I know they'll be there for me when I'm ready to come back. Like, I feel like it's this type of belief and thinking like that our beliefs are the superior ones and thinking that there's like one right way to do things, one right way to be a witch or one white, one right way to be a spiritual practitioner, to do wellness, that is also connected to organized religion and Mm -hmm. how Christianity is treated in this country. Mm -hmm. And not to say anything negative about anyone who believes in God. That is not what I mean. Right. But it's, it's the same general structure. Right. Just with different figures at the top. It's, Right. You know, there are plenty of people like on Witch Talk that treated witchcraft like going to church. And, right. you know, that's their work to solve. But it's it's always good to check in with yourself. Right. And, but I feel like even in that space, I, in so many of these spaces that you've listed, like Witch Talk, the natural, crunchy living, spirituality, mm-hmm. 5d all of those spaces fat people are hated yeah like fat Fat phobia lives in all of them yeah fat phobia um people with disabilities are hated people who need medication for mental health absolutely yes you know yeah all of these things that honestly deeply affect you and i you know Mm -hmm. there are people out there who think that i don't need to take Lexapro, because my depression is, God, a symptom of whatever random thing they want to attach it to, but it's not real. Mm -hmm. And I shouldn't be taking medication because that's just lowering my vibrations. I was going to say, your vibes are so low today, Haley. Like, I just wanted to let you know, like, you should really go on a seven day fast because your vibes are low. Yeah. Yeah. So, in case you guys couldn't tell or were unaware we live in a society with a medical field that is obsessed with focusing on our weight and uh you know what i'm just gonna say the last half of the sentence i wrote it's killing us literally killing us um a lot of what i read today 
hypothesizes that this hyper focus that we have on our own weights and you know preaching that we need to be mindful of our weights and be mindful of what we eat is coming from this just need for control like if you control what you eat you can control your health you can control how long you live you can control anything bad happening to you mm -hmm. and that's obviously not true healthy people right. die every day mm -hmm. you know regardless of their size there's i mean i feel like we all know someone that's like super athlete mm -hmm. has a serious illness it mm -hmm. it really has nothing to do with that but it's i feel like it's very hard for people especially in america to accept because it directly contradicts what we've been taught our whole lives right through capitalism and the good old Protestant work ethic, like all you got to do is work hard and do your best and you'll have everything you ever wanted. That's all you right. need to do. That's it. That's the magic. Yeah. That that's the secret. I'm just sure work no. till you're dead. Work your fingers to the bone. Yeah. Yep. You're just not trying hard enough. That's it. It's okay. But when someone is fat, chronically ill, or has a disability and is also fat, basically believed to be not taking control of their health, it's considered offensive. And like all other forms of bigotry, because it's offensive, that means you know there's no limit on what is acceptable as far as how people treat you being shamed is okay ridicule is okay oppression is okay dehumanizing <laughs> us exterminating us it's okay because we don't value ourselves right so why should they value us oh exactly I mean, mm -hmm. what is it? Uh, the comments that we get on our YouTube, right? Um, how about the glutton gals? Or oh, the, me, co bud. the cholesterol collaboration? Plump princesses. I kind of like that one. Like, I like that. I did. That, that was a compliment. Thank you. Thank you. Like, because we're fat mm -hmm. and we have fat bodies. We can get comments like that, of course. Mm hmm Okay. Just, yeah. you know, I just got to, I know we're not to us yet, but whoever left that comment, my cholesterol was great at 440 pounds. Mm -hmm. There wasn't a damn thing wrong with me other than my back. So right. suck my, suck my titty, bitch. Suck my titty. Anyway. Well, you know. <laughs> The, the, the best comment we've gotten so far is go Jim. <laughs> Who the fuck is Jim? <laughs> I'm sorry, I, just thought that was, I thought that was just in line with what you were saying. I was like, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> Let's dehumanize these. And you know, yeah. are fat body people the same as fat people? Are they? <laughs> These are the comments we get. See, this is, I know that I'm speaking only for myself. Part of why I don't let these people ruin my day is because half the time the comment is so fucking stupid and just ill-informed. Like, they have enough problems all on their own. I'm surprised that, that they strung a sentence together, basically, because yeah. it's like, what do you mean? One didn't. They said, go Jim. Yeah. I literally get a comment back and be like, Jim is my favorite team. Go Jim. Go Jim. <laughs> go Jim. Jim, first Super Bowl, whatever the fuck we're on. 55? God, I don't many. know. I don't sports. <laughs> oh, all right. So. Okay. Yeah, I did that. All right. So. Medical fat phobia 
is killing us because it impacts the care we receive so much that chronic issues are overlooked because doctors will connect anything going on to you just need to lose weight mm -hmm. and like like i mentioned earlier i had a yeast infection it must mean that i'm diabetic because i'm fat mm -hmm. but this belief causes them to over prescribe medications that can cause weight loss and that could be anything from you know the injection drugs that are very popular right now being prescribed to people who really shouldn't be taking them or metformin or mm -hmm. god like i'm trying to think of all the different drugs like if there's a drug out there for any condition that happens to have the side effect of weight loss by golly they're writing that shit on the prescription pad it's it's tough even though even though we know all this shit this is not a surprise this, yeah this is i'm just most likely not a surprise to our listeners either like i think that was the biggest shock earlier researching it because mm -hmm. i didn't expect it to make me so just it was like it's like the life was sucked out of me Mm -hmm. it's just it's triggering because i almost died because of fat phobia so i'm like yeah like actively almost died so i'm just like i hate this i hate this topic because i hate how real it is mm -hmm. and how it affects us and controls us and yeah i just think about the younger people that face it and the people in our comments that contribute to it you know like Absolutely. i'm glad we're doing this i'm glad we're putting ourselves out there and it's easier for us to like laugh and make fun of the people that do the comments but you know it we're it doing this for a reason a real problem yeah it does yeah and it's like you know to have that yeah. tough skin and do it anyways you know mm -hmm. keep going anyways it's just like yeah we shouldn't have to cope like that right is the thing i right. feel like out of all the aspects of fat phobia i would say that the medical aspect of it is the worst one because it actually kills people like right. i don't know how many stories i've seen on reddit and social media of people who had something and of course most of these are women or femmes because mm -hmm. women are already not taken seriously at the doctor's office, but they go in with an issue and they happen to also be fat. It's blamed on, oh, you just need to lose weight. I, I remember strongly reading one one time where she lost 70 pounds and went back. And that's, I can't remember what the condition was. This is so anticlimactic, but that's when they found what was actually wrong with her because they took her seriously mm -hmm. only after losing an insane amount of weight like 70 pounds is so much weight to lose but the symptoms didn't go I, it is honestly mind mind-blowing that my experience with my back that mm -hmm. my chiropractor and the physical therapy office that i saw took me seriously yeah being as heavy as i was and they exhausted all other options and I just was not getting better. And I think it was because I had seen them for so long, I've had chronic back issues, but you know, I was, I was obviously fat when I started seeing them, but they exhausted mm -hmm. all of their options before we had to have that real talk that it was actually my my weight being over 400 yeah. pounds put was putting pressure on my low back. And that was the fact that was the fact of the matter. I had already decided to have weight loss surgery at that point. So it was just a matter of keeping me comfortable and hoping that my pain got better, which thankfully it did. But mm -hmm. most other chiropractors and most other doctors would have just went from, went for weight right at the jump and not really yeah. tried to make me comfortable otherwise. 
Right. They wouldn't have wasted the time. Okay. So all of this medical fat phobia that we face, it causes some women, a lot of women, a lot of people to avoid the doctor altogether, which means any health problems that they have are just going to continue to get worse. And that mm-hmm. could be, that could make them harder to treat. That could be terminal for some. It really, you know, obviously it there's range to it, but there were some studies that I found that indicate that even just viewing yourself as overweight is connected with unhealthy levels of blood pressure, cholesterol, and glucose levels. Even if the person has a BMI, that's normal. It's the view, the fat phobia and how you view yourself and how society is telling you about your body is more detrimental than actually being fat. Yeah. That's the wild part. That's crazy. That's the part they don't want to focus on. Right. Of course not. Because then it's them, not you. You know, it's their Mm -hmm. behavior. It's how they're treating people. I mean, I didn't realize I was different until I was told I was different. Yeah. Until I was treated different. Yeah. At an extremely young age. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And once that started, it just never stopped. Mm Mm-mm. Nope. Nope, it didn't. (sighs) But... This is hard, guys. Yeah, this subject sucks. Okay. Yeah. yeah I'm proud getting, of us for getting... not making a ton of jokes. But... I know. I feel like we're being so good. Yeah. Some of it, it's like, I'm not even coming up with material, though. So it's like, it's not even jokeable. It's just the coping mechanisms are down. We're in this. Mm-hmm. We're in our bodies trying to be. Mm-hmm. Sam is... About to teleport to another dimension. Yeah. I, See, I would I'm, like to be asleep right now. <laughs> I'm like shrinking because yeah. I'm like. Mm-hmm. Yep. <sighs> okay. But all of this. So obviously because the medical community considers fatness to be such a big deal. The obesity epidemic, which obesity can be a whole other episode and it will be but it will be. all the research claims that fatness is the cause of all the health issues that it connects it to like heart disease cancer you name it it's connected to it but most of that research was done without taking into account the effect of fat phobia on a person and the stress man some of these are a little out of order bear with me it's all going to loop together (laughs) yeah but so obviously fat phobia and weight discrimination does not help people actually lose weight Mm -hmm. it actually increases instances of binge eating it makes people eat more caloric like higher caloric intake women and i am not trying to be like i don't know the word for it i'm not trying to deny the existence of genders outside of the binary it's the the sad part is most of this research is done with that binary in mind Mm -hmm. and just know if i'm saying women I mean, assigned female at birth. I do not mean to exclude anyone who is non-binary, genderqueer, trans, anything like that. Mm -hmm. But women who experience fat phobia are more likely to have chronic health conditions than those who don't. And that's because just being exposed to the repeated fat phobic instances it negatively impacts your view of yourself. It affects your mental health. It can cause anxiety, depression, disordered eating. 
the shame that comes with fat phobia and, you know, body shaming, it lowers a person's motivation to exercise. And more and more research is actually showing that fitness and moving your body separate from weight is the key to long-term health. It's not about the number on the scale. It's about not being extremely sedentary. Mm -hmm. But fat phobia and shaming people keeps people from going to the gym or taking that yoga class. Yes. Because we are repeatedly told and shown that we don't belong there. Right. And of course, fat phobia also means that plus size people who do muster up the courage to go to the gym have a lack of access to workout gear, like clothing, equipment, and that's all in addition to being in an environment that is hostile toward them because they don't want us there. Right. So even if we do find a way to get to Planet Fitness, until recently, we couldn't even find pants to wear. Right. I Going to the gym for me is, I love it because moving my body makes my body feel good. Mm-hmm. And I am able-bodied enough to do it. Yes. Being there is a mental nightmare. I will say that the gym that I go to, I I love it because I try to find the group of old people that are working out. Those are my babes. Or I will stick with the larger, like other larger femmes. Um, Mm -hmm. Those are the ones that I stick to because women, you know, femmes, women, you know, we tend to stick together in like, it's like herd mentality. You know what I mean? (laughs) So it's like, I'll yeah. be on the treadmill and I'll notice like I'm obviously going to pick the one that I'm by myself but then like a femme will be beside me and then another femme will be beside them and it's like so we're all like together in our little like herd bubble of like don't look at me but also like you're safe here um, mm-hmm. I do like that aspect of my gym but um, it took me a while to even muster up the courage to get there so yeah yeah I, my experience at, at my gym, I feel like overall has been pretty good considering it's a plan of fitness right? and it's obviously full of college aged people, Mm -hmm. you know, meatheads, etc. Um, I have never experienced outright fat phobia there, but You know, there's, of course, been some guys that have stopped and told me to smile while I'm lifting. And I'm like, if you don't get, I will beat you with this this dumbbell. That's disgusting. Like, I'm I'm busy. Yeah. (laughs) But being in the free weight section of the gym is very anxiety inducing. Because... I haven't been there yet. No? Mm -mm, I love Because of the anxiety. So I... Yeah, I love lifting. It's something that I really enjoy, and that is what gets me over there. But half the time I put it off until the end because it's so packed. And if there's too many guys over there, Mm. I'm like, I feel like I don't belong there. I don't want to risk that kind of interaction. Half the time I'm over there full of anxiety and being being there out of spite taking up that space out of spite almost daring someone to say something to me Mm -hmm. even though i know if they do it would be devastating right and of course yeah and also being called out by a man in public would be potentially dangerous to my own life right so it's it's a conscious risk yeah and it is not easy no but getting towards well getting towards the end ish yeah we definitely want to 
We definitely want to get towards the end. <laughs> yeah. We, we, what are you talking about? Like, we don't want this to ever end. Kidding. <laughs> yeah. I do want to say that everybody, every person alive right now, suffers because of fat phobia. Especially fat people, but b because of societal, society's beliefs, everyone, regardless of their size, is afraid of being more fat mm -hmm. than they are. Or, you know, people of all sizes will look down on or pity someone who is larger or less able-bodied than them. Like, thin people don't want to be fat. Fat people don't want to be at the highest end of the fat community. Mm -hmm. We don't want to feel like animals in a zoo, basically. We don't want to be like a spectacle. I don't really know. I'm struggling to find a good way to say that. But we don't. Yeah. Everyone yeah. has internalized fat phobia. Absolutely. And it is, it's something that I can admit that I still have those passing thoughts and I have to stop myself and be like, hold on a minute, like, run that back. I have to correct that. Same. It's, it is never ending trying to get mm. rid of that. Yeah, I feel like in, even in like the fat community, there's, there's a level that mm -hmm. each person has where they're accepting and tolerant and like, I'm so pro fat. And I, you know, like I'm a fat bodied person and I embrace fat. But then when someone goes over that bar, then that's when their that person's internal fat phobia comes out. Cause they're like, Oh, like, you know, like I know I'm a fat person, but sheesh, like that's, they're mm -hmm. really big. Like, um, yeah. I know there's a couple models that I follow that, you know, they reached the, oh, they went over that bar for a lot of people and people were cruel to them in their own mm -hmm. communities. And yeah, I've witnessed that mm -hmm. firsthand growing up of, you know, being around big people and there was like a level, like an acceptable level of fat. Right. And if you reached beyond that, your community turned on you. Yeah. You know? Absolutely. It's, it's a mixture of fat phobia and ableism as well, because I feel like most of those are connected to mobility mm -hmm. and everyone can, people will be like, oh, I'm so pro fat, but I don't want to require a scooter to get around the store. Like mm -hmm. the person using it doesn't, you know, they would like to not need it either. Nobody right. wants to deal with that but it doesn't mean that they're any less valuable as a human being right, right. exactly it's well like i know early on before we started recording i shared um some graphics about the fatness spectrum on our instagram if you don't follow us you should but as you go through those the different levels of the spectrum the higher you go the more the more discrimination and lack of access you face in all aspects of your life. Mm -hmm. And obviously the largest, the largest people have the hardest time finding clothes. They have the hardest time with quality healthcare, finding a job because the bigger you are, the, the less they want to pay you. Right. And the more, the less, uh, the less qualified you're considered to be. Yeah. And, and, and the less rights you have to your own existence, mm -hmm. I feel like, because we have examples of like my 600 pound life where, yeah, or, or you the, know, the sisters, I, mm -hmm. I, I don't remember, but those shows that make a spectacle out of yes, the super fats and infinity fats of the world. Yes. And they say, like, it's oh, it's a fucking like joke. Like it's, yeah, they're on, sh they're on display and this, yeah. it's like they find people like, obviously there's actors and actresses in that show. It's a reality show. Like it's like the narrative's already been formed for them. Mm -hmm. So it's, that's what society thinks it's life is like instead of yeah. showing what it's really like and how 
the lack of access to hu- human things they have. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, ridiculous. I mean, with those shows, there's even, I think it is on my 600 pound life, that doctor that's a total fucking asshole. Oh, People yeah, in the a- bariatric community that are really steeped in that shit love him. They think that he's so funny and like everything that he's saying is just facts. And it's like, no. Like, that is not how you treat people. Shame does not motivate anybody. Right. Like, right. People don't deserve to be shamed for being right. over any amount of pounds. Right. Or under. Exactly. Like, they don't deserve it at all. Right. Of course, fat phobia is seen in, it can be seen in trends throughout time. It's especially apparent right now with the Kardashians slimming down earlier this year. Um, you know, I, I don't want us to focus too much on other people's bodies, but their plastic surgery experiences are well I don't want to say, I don't know if it's well documented or it's well hypothesized that they've had these procedures by the media, but they appear to have slimmed down, reduced their breast size, reduced the size of their butts, you know, changed how they looked and all of that to fit a certain aesthetic. The, how do you say it? The buccal fat? Is it buccal fat or buccal fat? Uh, I think it's buccal fat, buccal fat. The the procedure, I'll just explain it. The procedure <laughs> that takes this pocket of fat out of your cheek, like around your jaw. It mm-hmm. makes people's faces look snatched, like very gaunt. And it's fat phobic. I It's also a really bad procedure because... You never get that fat back. And as you age, your <sighs> cheeks will look like shit. You will look very old for your age because this fat here is kind of what keeps, I believe it keeps your jowls where they are. So if you don't have that and you don't have the money to keep yourself up with that, you're going to just continue to look older than you are oh yeah so if anyone who is not a millionaire is thinking about doing that because they like how it looks reconsider Mm. maybe but in addition to that the the reemergence of the 2000s fashion trends that were Mm -hmm. so great for our self-esteem the first time Mm -hmm. are back around like the low rise jeans Mm. the exposed thongs Mm. the crop tops with the low rise jeans so exposed in your midriff none of those are bad i'm not going to shame anyone who wears those you know i think that they're certainly a look i think that it can definitely be cute but with those trends comes the fat phobia comes the the muffin top watch Mm-hmm. you know yeah exactly all of that exactly um all I right think that we can go ahead and go into our our own experiences with fat phobia i feel like okay. i've been doing a lot of talking so you can go first <laughs> okay so my the one experience that like sticks out to me especially talking about like medical fat phobia would be i was 15 I think this was back in 2007 um I was 15 I think I believe I think so I'm not sure I just know it was 2007 um it was my sophomore year of high school and I was in class one day and it was like I thought I was dying I got this like super sharp pain and I was like I literally thought I was dying um Mm -hmm. and it went away and I was like okay weird And then I noticed every time I ate, after a while, I would just get this, like, ungodly amount of pain. Like, the most pain I've ever felt in my life, to be honest. Um, And I finally convinced my mom to take me to the doctor. And the doctor did the whole, like, oh, let me listen to your lungs and let me feel on your belly. And 
you know, um, and they were like, well, you know, it's probably gas because your daughter's obese. Um, we'll run some tests. And my mom was like, Sam, like, is this, you know, are you like crying wolf right now? Like, it, like, are you really in a lot of pain? I'm like, no, like mom, like I, I'm literally dying. Like something inside of me is happening. Like I'm, I'm, I'm I've never felt this amount of pain. Um, mm -hmm. so they send us home and I am in the shower and my mom gets a phone call. And this was a couple days later, by the way, um, I'm in the shower and this, um, my mom gets a phone call and the doctor's like, Hey, uh, JK, it's not gas. Um, your daughter's live, uh, Leah, my liver was shutting down and I had like, they, after they, after they, so my liver was shutting down my pancreas, which I had like pancreatitis. I was like turning yellow. Okay. I was actively dying. Um, they rushed me to the hospital and they realized I had 10 gallstones <gasps> that I was like, my gallbladder was like trying to deal. So like I could have died. I would have died. Um, if I hadn't got that emergency surgery where they took my gallbladder out. Um, mm -hmm. because of fat phobia, because I was overweight and instead of listening to me and treating me like a normal patient, they assumed it was because I had gas cause I was obese. So, um, you know, I have a lot of medical trauma because of fat phobia. Um, mm -hmm. I have a lot of personal relationships that have ended because of it. Family relationships that are have to be set within certain boundaries because of it. Um, like I was, I took my mom out to my, my other mom, not my bio mom out for lunch after chemo. And we picked up lunch for my bio mom and we came home and we were all just like eating lunch. And my mom, like my bio mom, like made a comment on what I was eating. Knowing that, like, that's within the rules of, like, I don't want you to come. And, like, I'm eating the same thing everybody else is eating. Like, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Um, yeah. And I know, like, she was just, like, stating her opinion, but it was steeped in fat phobia. And it hurts as someone that you love to to see that when you already are dealing with it internally and you deal with it um, from being online and having a presence online like we deal with that phobia every second of every day from our comments that we get that are hard to deal with um mm -hmm. you know when i got married it was so hard to find a dress in my size and so it's like it impacts me every single day and i could like we could be here for two other hours honestly for me being like the my personal experiences so i'll just stick with the the big surgery one, um, which is because it's hard. Matt, like that's a huge experience. It is, I, and it. We've been friends for how long? I didn't know that it was that bad. Yeah, well, I normally when I talk about the experience, it's normally like, oh my, you know, my near death experience is how because like that's the one of the complications that I had. Um, mm -hmm. so that's the one, like I talk about, um, I don't really talk about what like led up to it <laughs> cause yeah. I'm just so used, I'm just so used to like fat phobia in the medical industry. So I'm like, of course they almost killed me. You know what I mean? <laughs> um, okay. So obviously I would agree that medical fat phobia has been part of my biggest experiences with it like I mentioned earlier in the episode I have been tested for diabetes multiple times for uh like for any any reason that they could attach it to I have been put on medications multiple medications to try and lose weight and some of those I asked for but some of those were given to me or prescribed to me because I needed to lose weight mm -hmm. because I kept gaining weight. Maintaining right. my weight has always been very difficult for me, but most of it has been related to just trying to find something wrong with me 
to justify my weight when it just is not there. Mm -hmm. I have always been big. My parents are big. My parents' parents. Mostly big. From what I'm trying to remember, they've all passed on. But, um, you know, genetics play a big part in weight. And that's kind of kind of what I got, you know? Right. But there has always been that, that, oh, you need to worry about your weight now because you could get diabetes. Mm -hmm. I've gotten that from, from my parents as well as doctors. I, you know, both of my parents are diabetic and I know that I know how horrible of a disease diabetes can be. And I know that they don't want that for me as their kid because they love me. They don't want to see me suffer. Right. You know, but it doesn't change the impact of hearing that most of my life. Right. Being on diets with them, starting when I was as young as six years old. Yep. That's how I know keto is bullshit because I did that yeah. shit with Atkins. Yeah, same. I, same. In that, I was in that bitch. It doesn't work. Mm -hmm. South no. Beach didn't work either. No. Mm -mm. But that has been the bulk of my experience. Like I've said in other episodes, um, as far as dating goes, the the dudes in my hometown just weren't interested in the shy, awkward, fat girl, which, you know, everyone likes what they like. It was a hard adjustment coming to the town I live in now and dealing with that sudden new interest. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, I have been with people who wanted to hide me, people who would be with me, but then throw my weight back in my face later. Obviously, not everyone oh, that yeah. I was into treated me kindly. Right. In a, in a multitude of ways. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. But that is kind of the crux of this whole issue. We aren't treated like humans. And exactly. Being a woman or a femme on top of that makes all of this even worse because... I would bet dollars to donuts if you were a boy when you showed up at that doctor complaining of your stomach pain, they would have figured it out. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and I, as this podcast grows and as we share more topics, you know, we're, I feel mm -hmm. like when you're on the spot thinking about like how fat phobia has affected us, it's such a, a huge question it's such a layered question mm -hmm. it's it's like what in what area of my life do you want to talk about you know what i mean right. like do you want to talk about yeah. relationships do you want to talk about doctors and medical do you want to talk about career um mm -hmm. you know like we could spend six days here talking about fat phobia and how it's shaped us and still to this day challenges us in yeah. daily, daily, mm -hmm. um, whether it's internalized or outside of us and we're experiencing it through other people. Yeah. But I think the, the only way to combat, combat fat phobia is to meet it head on when you see it, mm -hmm. when you see it within yourself, when you see it in other people, when you experience it through other people, um, call it out when you see it. And know that you do not have to take it. You do not have to give it to yourself. You don't have to treat yourself that way. You don't have to treat other people that way. And you absolutely do not have to allow other people to treat you that way. Whether it's friends, family, doctors, you don't have to take it. Um, nothing bad is going to happen from you saying, hey, you can't treat me that way. Mm -hmm. Like, other than maybe not having that person in your life anymore, but do you actually want them in your life? Like, honestly, um, right. I'm not advocate saying like for yourself. Yeah. Advocate for yourself. I'm not saying like go punch a doctor in the face, but what I am saying is, you know, tell the doctor, like, 
I understand your concern about my weight, but that's not why I'm here. Yeah. You know? Or another thing that I've seen recommended is if they don't want to treat whatever you're going to them about, ask them to note that in your chart that you yes. came for this issue and they are declining to treat you. Yes. And it seems like that's very effective in getting them to change their tune. Right. Yeah. I love that advice, especially when it comes to medical, um, with friends and family, you know, set up boundaries, let them know what you will accept, what you won't accept. Um, you know, I've shared on here about my relationship with my mom, who I love. We have a great relationship, but we have a great relationship because of boundaries. We have a great relationship because I've said, Hey, my weight is a top is off topic. We can't talk about it. Mm -hmm. That's a no topic. I don't want to, I don't want to talk about, I don't want to hear you talk about what I'm putting in my body. I don't want to hear you talking about what my body looks like. Um, and I will do the same for you, you know, mm -hmm. and that's allowed us, we still have a great relationship. We can talk about so much other stuff. Um, but I don't, this is a topic I don't need your input on, you know, and because she yeah. loves me, she respects that mostly. Um, <laughs> But yeah. I don't know. Do you have anything else to add? Um, yeah, I think I have a little bit more. Okay. Um, and you can cut it in wherever. Okay. But <laughs> no, like, I think the boundaries, mentioning the boundaries is a really great thing. I would say that that is something that I need to work on with my own parents. And it's with one more so than the other. As time goes on, I'm sure that I will share more, but I don't have the same issues with one parent as I do the other. And mm -hmm. I have set boundaries with one parent over other issues and they have been respected. Mm -hmm. But it's like, that was the more glaring issue for me going into like working on myself and healing myself and figuring out all of my shit in therapy. And now I have to focus on this subtler but perhaps more impactful stuff for my childhood like I have to figure out how to set boundaries about talking about my body about talking about food with me right and that's it's hard for me to even think about yeah I know it's I, necessary but it's hard to think about the parent that I, it's like, I didn't expect to have to do something like that mm -hmm. because, you know, I guess I'm being really vague. Like my, I'll just say it. My mom is a less reactive person. She's mm -hmm. a lot more laid back. And I think because of that, I just let, I let shit roll off my back when it really wasn't rolling off my back. It was actually really affecting me. Yeah, going inside. And I'm seeing that now. Yeah. 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 I think once you're ready, definitely set those boundaries. I mean, I even have those boundaries with Brian, like someone that I love and knows me so completely. And, you know, we have such a healthy relationship, but we both have our boundaries. And mm -hmm. when he sees me like in an active binge, he knows to allow the wave to pass. Mm -hmm. I can't have him. I can't, he can't be the husband that we, you know, did that Reddit post about. And he's like, you know, I told my son that, or my kids that my wife, you know, ate the egg because she's fat. Like he would never do that because yeah. I have that boundary of like, when you know, I'm in an active binge, I am trying to process something that I cannot process. I'm also trying to, yeah. you know, deal with that disorder as best I can the way you can support me is by loving me through it. Mm -hmm. I don't want your help. I don't want your advice. I want you to love me when I'm not binging, when I am binging and after I'm done binging and I feel shame about binging. Like mm -hmm. this isn't something he can solve. This is no. a me thing. So I just need him to be there for me and to not talk about it because we both know it exists. It's not something that mm -hmm. we're, it's not like we're hiding from it or a blindly like, you know, turning a blind eye to it. It's more like I have set the boundaries of what I can accept right now 
when it comes to that yeah. topic and he has he accommodates those boundaries so and that's Beautiful. something that you know that you have to do when you're dealing with fatness and growing up in a fat phobic society living actively living as a fat person in a fat phobic society it's like the for me it's a hard step but it is an easier step to set those boundaries with the people you love because you know that they love you and they will respect those boundaries it's a lot scarier to do it with strangers like employers mm -hmm. and people at the gym and doctors like for me that's where i get a little bit scared to set the boundary um yeah but that's and I think my it's next step that's like yeah it's some like doctor's appointments i feel like for me it's hard to set the boundary because in my mind it's temporary yeah yeah like it's an hour and mm -hmm. i can be upset about it afterward mm -hmm. but someone like your spouse who you're around yeah. all the time absolutely makes sense to have those boundaries in place otherwise you could be just continuously hammered with a bunch of shit that doesn't help you right and the exactly. other person thinks they're they're doing their best but right yeah yeah all right so fat phobia hard subject we didn't even cover half of it, but we're trying. Yeah. <laughs> we're trying to ease you guys into it and also ease ourselves into it. This is a heavy topic. It hits home for both Haley and I, and I'm sure it hits home for y'all as well. Um, mm -hmm. Just know that here you are supported. You are seen. You are loved um, as you are. And if you have internalized fat phobia, I don't want you to worry about it. We do too. We're actively trying to work on it, but we would be yeah. lying and be doing everyone an injustice if we said we didn't have it. So mm -hmm. grow with us, um, yes. learn as we learn, and hopefully you guys took, you know, something really amazing away from this episode that, you know, you don't have to stand there and take it <laughs> and definitely don't give it to yourself. Um, no. And we share the same struggles. So you can find family and home here in the plus size section. Um, join our family huh? <laughs> by, <Yes. so> <laughs> by following us on Spotify. Rate us on Spotify, please. Rate us on Apple Music. Um, subscribe to our YouTube Follow us on TikTok. We post outtakes on TikTok. It's a lot of fun. Um, follow us on Instagram. Um, oh, we do have a Gmail. If you guys want to send any stories or anything and you don't want to do it through um, Instagram, you can email us at the plus size section at gmail.com. I thought that'd be fun. So um, we... We have had some people ask about a Patreon. We're not ready yet, guys. Like, we want to have a Patreon, but we're going to get yeah, some more episodes we're under. On we're, we're, we're working on it. We're working on it. Yeah. Um, we don't have a P.O. Box yet or anything like that. So just save all that good love for us um, and interact with us on our socials so we can build this community um, but yeah, I think that's going to be it for this episode. Thank you, Haley, unapologetically Haley for leading such a important, impactful episode. Um, for you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I love you. And we will <laughs> see y'all next week. Bye guys. Love you. I love you. <laughs>